Well, hello everyone and welcome to this Endcare Species Guide Remastered series. Now, this remastered series of Endcare Species Guide is where I take my old videos and produce them again with either the same or more and better information if that applies and the most important thing is a better production value. Now, if you want to watch the original video on this end species that I'm doing today, I'll leave an iCard over on the top there where you can see the original video, which is a hidden video on my channel. Okay, so let's begin. So, today we're going to be talking about Campanotus barbaricus. Campanotus barbaricus obviously is a species that belongs to the genus Campanotus, and therefore their common name is usually Carpentrans in basically all of the world except in Australia because down under they call them sugar ants. Campanotus barbaricus specifically exists a little bit all throughout the surroundings of the Mediterranean Sea, though in Europe they do extend their range a bit further north. Okay, so they are most common and fairly widespread in Europe. Um, quick correction from uh, present day me it's not actually all around the Mediterranean Sea, they actually only live, only live on the west side of the Mediterranean Sea, which means they basically exist in Portugal, Spain and France, and obviously in all throughout the north of Africa, above Sahara. They are actually one of the biggest ant species in Europe. They are not the biggest, but they are very close to it. And we'll get to sizes in a bit and you'll see what I mean. Now, when it comes to temperatures, they're obviously a temperate ant species because even though they are technically native to the northern Africa zone, it is um, above Saharan uh, temperatures and it is technically still considered a temperate region and the numbers for their, um, for their humidity and temperature are fairly easy to achieve for most normal households, all right? So when it comes to, temp to humidity, they can withstand anything from 30 to 70%. Though they do prefer it to be slightly on the more humid side of that range. And by that I mean that they need or should be kept at above 50%. My recommendation and what worked best for me is 50% outside, higher in the nest, which is something that works for a great deal of ant species. The far most of them do do well in, this condi in these conditions. So the thing is that they don't deal very well with too moist of an environment. They are usually found in grasslands or savanna-like places and therefore you should not keep them above 70% for too long periods of time so if, it, if you happen to somehow raise it, the humidity of your ant room or the, the room of the house in, where, in which they're in for a day or two that's fine it's totally okay but permanently keeping them in high humidities can be detrimental they don't deal very well with that okay uh, lower temperatures I find they deal slightly better, they don't crash as easily, but it does slow down the process of laying eggs and the brood piles might start to die off. The colony itself will probably be fine with a week below 50%, but more than that is not advisable. When it comes to temperatures, Campanotus barbaricus is um, capable of extending large uh, ranges and they are known to be in places that reach even 40 degrees Celsius but that's not something that you that they should and are prepared to extend for more than a few hours so keep that in mind that the best range for them is actually slightly on the colder side of things they will live well anywhere from 18 to 28 degrees Celsius however to have them thrive and grow the best that they possibly have it does depend on region because they have a very large range but the thing that seems to work out the most for everyone I've been in touch with and every care guide and study that I've seen is to keep them around the 26-25 degrees Celsius which is also basically in the golden spot for almost all ant species so they are as I've said very easy to climatize also in any ant species, and this one is no exception, 
you should try to give them a gradient for them to further and hydro-regulate themselves as they want to. And if you, don't want, if you do not know how to do that, I'll leave a link for a, a video of mine that explains how you can do that in the description down below, okay? So, after this video is done, not right now, please finish the video, go there and watch that. Also, now that we're talking about climate, I should mention that they do hibernate, usually from October to February, and they usually hibernate at a little bit below 15 degrees Celsius, so anywhere between 10 and 15. 10 is slightly dangerous, it's a little bit too cold for them. Uh, I have personally never hibernated in Bar uh, Campanotus barbaricus colony, however, I've read a lot of stuff about how people hibernate them and how they usually hibernate, and it's they really do take a good deal of care into building their nests in a way that they are regularly, even while during cold nights of winter, that they are above 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, since, since I expect you not to be checking on them every day, um, and they cannot withstand temperatures below 10 for long periods of hours or even a day, you should keep them above 10, below 15. That will not wake them up, that will be perfectly fine for them. Now, let's get to sizes. The queen of this species is somewhere around 17 millimeters in length, while the workers are very polymorphic. There are three distinct castes. The minor worker, the so-called media or medium-sized major or worker, and the actual big majors. Now, they can go anywhere between 8 to 17 millimeters in length, which is the same size as the queen. So, the thing is that um, despite there being three distinct castes, there are still workers, or minor workers, I should say, that are bigger than other minor workers, and there are still super majors that are bigger than other super majors. So, you've got the whole range, but there are, if you look closely, there are actually three distinct castes, and each one has a bigger head proportion to body size. So, the majors will have a bigger head compared to their bodies, because their task is usually to defend the nest and crush stuff up. Now, the thing is that with Camponotus barbaricus in specific, I found that they don't really stay in the nest to defend it as much as other ant species. The, the super workers do come out quite a lot, which is something I wasn't expecting when I got the species, but it was a very pleasant surprise. The actual colony size, this is a, I should say, normal or common Campanotus in that sense, to which they get to huge numbers, though very slowly. They can achieve 10,000 members in the same colony. However, being temperate ant species and big ant species and Campanotus, they do develop fairly slowly. Why do I say this? Well, because Firstly, they're temperate, which means that they are programmed to stop for three months a year. And even if you don't hibernate them, the growth of the colony will be slower doing what they think to be winter and, um, and autumn. So, though you will get a boost by, uh, in colony numbers by not hibernating them, they will be growing faster when their bio clock tells them it's summer or spring than when their bio clock is telling them that it's autumn or winter. Also, being very uh, large ants, the, the life cycle of uh, an adult ant from egg to adult worker takes a long time. I'd say in this species it takes almost a month, three weeks to a month, in good conditions for a, an egg to eventually develop to a worker, passing by, of course, larvae and pupae. Also, being Campanotus, this ant species Queens usually take a few breaks along the year of a few weeks a month of laying eggs to just stop and conserve energy. It does happen in almost every single Campanotus ant species, especially temperate ones. And it isn't a bad thing, it's usually a good thing. It's usually a sign that the queen and the colony is thriving and so to keep in mind the long run they are stopping to lay eggs for a while so that the queen may rest up in order to be more, more fruitful in the long run. So, when it comes to food, this ant species is very omnivorous. They love sweets, as almost all Campanotus ants. That's why they're called sugar ants in Australia. They are very eager to eat sweets. So, anything from honey to sugar water and stuff like that, 
they'll love it and they'll lap it up just very, very quickly. You can see footage here of my my Sun Empire, which is a Campanotus going up, Campanotus Barbaricus, but another Campanotus, just ravishing down a few drops of honey. Now, fruits are also sweet, and Campanotus actually love fruits. They love to lap up their juices, dig holes in them to eat more of the juices that are inside, so fruits is a great complement to a big colony of Campanotus. Small colonies usually ignore fruits, and the, 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 the one fruit that I find to be the best for almost all Campanotus species is apple. Make sure that the apple has no pesticides in it, and wash it well, and if you can, take out the, the outer skin to make it easier for the, the ants to burrow and dig all throughout the, the apple to consume as much juice as they can before it dries out, because ants don't really eat solid foods. So they can only eat the juices of the fruit. Now they also need some protein, which should come in the form of insects or basically whatever else. They are scavengers and they will eat anything that you can actually feed them. But the insects are by far the most healthy and easiest way to feed your ants um, some protein. They really do appreciate mealworms. They seem to like that over anything else I've offered them. And nowadays it's the only thing I feed my ants. So insects, cut up insects, they, they'll do what they can. I find that Campanotus barbaricus because until they reach super massive sizes, we won't really hunt big insects. If you introduce fruit flies, sure, sure they'll hunt that, but a live mealworm, they'll probably try to tackle it as long as it's near the entrance to the nest, but if it walks away, they'll probably ignore it. That's my experience. Each colony is a colony, especially in that regard of hunting behavior. Now, speaking of behavior, as I've said, the mages actually come out a lot, which is a cool behavior, which is not found in every single ant species, and that's very cool. Also, being Campanotus, they can utilize almost every single setup that you would keep ants in. There's no setup I can think of that would be detrimental to Campanotus ant species. Naturalistic, outworld attached to a nest, outworld and the nest hole all in one whatever materials you want to use, as long as you can keep them in the conditions that they need of climate, they'll be just fine. The one thing that, I'm, that I would mention is that this species is very big. And though the first workers might be a little bit on the smaller side, soon they'll get majors, and even the smaller workers are quite big, even though they are pretty slender. So the thing is that you must keep in mind is that the tubes with, that you use to connect stuff in their setup should be big enough to allow the ants to travel and do that in two ways at least. The, uh, if you don't do that, eventually there will be a sort of traffic jam in some of the tubes and that is not necessarily detrimental to the ant colony, but they will feel like they need a little bit more space. So they might try to dig out some of the material that they're in and that might be bad for you, but I find that, first of all, they can't really chew through almost anything, but if you, keep, if you keep them in a cork nest or a wood nest, that they might be able to dig through and to chew through. So they don't really do that unless they need space, and one of the, the major issues I've found people to have with big campanotas of them needing space is not exactly in the nest itself, is more in the tubes that connect specially two different nest modules, okay? So, you know, keep that in mind, but it's not really a big deal. I find that this colony being so easy to care in both climate, nutrition, and etc., and being such a big ant colony that doesn't require a lot of work, but is very cool and easy to watch with the naked eye, they are very cool ants to keep in general, and especially very good for beginners. I would not consider them as easy to take care of as Mesa Barbaros, but they can, you know, live in a more wide variety of setups, and they are very, very interesting. They're even bigger than Mesa Barbaros, and they're found in all, almost the same locations. I find them to be very, very cool, and I loved keeping them when I did. So that's it. I hope you've liked this. I hope you've, you can keep uh, Campanotus Barbaricus based on this video, and I will see you in the next one, I, I hope. Bye-bye. Ay, 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 ay.